Okay, let's do a quick review of last time where we left off pretty much on the right side of the board here is what we covered last time. Um, the, uh, put this over here. Number one, heat conduction. We were talking about the three modes of heat transfer. The first one was heat conduction governed by Fourier's equation. The general one dimensional form is QX double prime. Double prime means per unit area, surface area, minus K dt dx. K is a property of the material called the thermal conductivity. If it's one dimensional heat transfer, the equation becomes a bit simpler because you can replace the differential dt dx by delta t over delta x. So the equation becomes Q double prime equal K delta T over L. L is the thickness of the material. Now, number two, convection heat transfer, called Newton's law of cooling. Q double prime again is equal to H T S minus T infinity. H is not a property. H depends on many things. It's called the convection heat transfer coefficient. You have to tell me, first of all, what's the fluid? Uh, what's its temperature? What's its pressure for a gas? You have to tell me what's a geometry. Is it spherical, cylindrical, a plain wall, a flat surface? You have to tell me the flow regime. Is it laminar? Is it turbulent? Is it mixed flow? What's going on with the flow? What's the velocity and so on? So it's very complicated. You won't find H in the back of the book in a table. You've got to calculate H, and that's what chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9 talk about, is how to calculate H. Now, number three, radiation heat transfer, thermal radiation. The basic law about the emission of energy from a surface is the Stefan Boltzmann law. I think in class last time, if you check your notes, I might have put a Q here. That's not right, it's capital E. So if you can change your handwritten notes or on your laptop, whatever, that should be capital E. Capital E is called the emissive power. I'll put that down here. <coughs> Let's put it right here. <coughs> It's in watts per square meter, but it's called the emissive power. For a black body, which is a perfect emitter of thermal radiation, it's sigma Ts to the fourth. Sigma is a constant, the Stefan Boltzmann constant. It's in your notes. <clears throat> if it's not a perfect emitter of radiation, then we have just E without the subscript B. The subscript B means black body. So E equals sigma. Now we add something called the emissivity epsilon T s to the fourth. The emissivity can vary from zero to one. If the emissivity is one, the body behaves as if it's a black body. Okay, now everywhere in radiation, you have to put the temperature in absolute. Gotta be. Don't use degree C. Use degree K. If it's conduction, you can use either one. Just use all degree C, use all degree K. The answer is going to be the same. If it's convection, you can use either all degree C or all degrees K. The answer is the same. When you get to radiation, you have to use absolute degree K. Now, we said last time, if you have a small object in a large enclosure and you want to know the exchange of thermal energy between those two objects, here's the equation. Q in watts equal emissivity of what? The small object. A of what? The small object. Times sigma times T surface of what? The small object. Minus T surroundings. What is that? The temperature of the surrounding walls in a room 
or if you put a dime in a basketball, that's a small object, a dime in a large enclosure, a basketball. Okay, now we didn't discuss this last time, but I added two more, yeah, one more thing. One more. In chapter one, we also talk about absorbed incident radiation. First of all, the symbol capital G. It's called the irradiation. It's how much energy comes into a surface from its surroundings. The thermal radiation coming into a surface from its surroundings. This is the amount absorbed, G, ABS, absorbed. This is a constant for a surface, in our case, alpha. Alpha is the absorptivity. It varies between zero and one. Okay, so now we have two properties over here. Emissivity, epsilon, absorptivity, alpha. We have one capital letter E called the emissive power. We have one capital G called the irradiation. They're both in watts per square meter. We also have a Q. The Q is in watts. We also have a Q prime, watts per square meter. Okay, so we're gonna use those three modes of heat transfer uh, in examples today. But before we do that, just to show you how they're related to, to real life, here's my coffee cup, you know. I heat it before my eight o'clock class and by 8.50 it was getting kind of cool. So I went down the breezeway and heated it, microwave, now it's back up again to good temperature. It's pretty good, yeah. Uh, by 9.50, 50 minutes from now, this is probably going to be pretty cool again. I'll probably go down and heat it again in the microwave for the 10 o'clock class. I say, gosh, isn't there a... This is styrofoam, okay? It's supposed to insulate the hot coffee from the cooler room air. It's doing an okay job if I drank kind of fast. But the temperature of the coffee is going to go down with time. So I, I think, okay, let's see. I've had heat transfer. I, so I should be able to solve this problem. I'm, I'm going to put a lid on it. Why it's hard to drink. I don't like drinking out of that lid. Well, heat's lost out of the top two ways. If it's steaming coffee, you know, the steam's taking heat out. If I have this coffee cup outside and there's air blowing over it, I've got convection off the top surface. I've got conduction through the styrofoam walls of the coffee cup. Doing this prevents some convection. There's still convection on the outside, but not off the top. I think, yeah, I know. 950, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't trust it. I want to keep it really warm. So think, well, what else can I do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put two of these guys together. Double insulate it. Yeah, okay, good. Now I've got two times the thickness, which means what? Q goes down. Yeah, smart. Double insulated. And matter of fact, by doing that, I trap air in there. Oh, when you trap air in something, wow, is that good insulation. That's about the best you can get, except for a vacuum. Trap air so it doesn't move. This coffee will last longer. Maybe till 10.50. Uh, so, you say, you know, I don't, it looks kind of funny. I don't, I don't like the way that looks. I, I, I know it's good, but I'm going to go out and spend some money and get something really nice. Okay. Now, yeah, that's the same thing as that styrofoam. There's two aluminum layers in there, but there's air between them, inside, outside. It's a gift of the ME department to faculty. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't like to use it, though. Uh, nice lid, you know, nice pops in there, really good and solid, you know. Oh, yeah, it's great. Between these inner and outer layers, air, air's a great insulator. You want to spend more money? Take the air out of there. Make a vacuum inside of there between those two layers. Ooh, that's great. Now you've eliminated your convection because there's no air in there. It's going to cost you more. Depends how, how much you want to spend. But yeah, so we've got, we've got uh, and also 
this isn't painted black on both sides. That'd be bad for radiation. You want it to be reflected and not, not to be absorbed. This is a combination of radiation, convection, and conduction in something like this. So yeah, you know, everything in your real life, whether it's in your kitchen or your car or whatever, impacts. Your engine block gets really hot. Don't touch it after you've been driving for a while, freeway speeds. Is it radiating heat to anything? Oh yeah, to the inside of your hood and inside of your engine compartment. So yeah, there's, there's definitely radiation in there. Uh, there's convection in there for sure. There's conduction through that solid engine block. So you take the heat out of the water by what? Tubes. By conduction, yeah. You take the heat out by convection, yeah. The tubes in there and the fins, oh yeah, complicated, but they all interact. Those three modes of heat transfer can be found all over our real lives like that. Uh -huh. So they're, they're everywhere. Now, just to remind you what Q double prime means and what Q means, Q double prime equal Q over A. Okay, this is called the heat flux. This is called the heat rate, sometimes called the heat transfer. Heat flux, heat rate, or heat transfer. Okay, so let's take conduction first. Our problem is a cubicle furnace compartment, two meters on a side, insulated, it's, uh, it's the wall thickness. So here's a K of, let's see, I think it's made out of uh, the insulation, yeah, styrofoam. And the value of K is given 0 0.030 watts per meter K. That came from the back of the book, but in chapter one, they give you the value of K. In chapter two, they're gonna ask you to go find K in the back of the book. We're also given um, that the uh, heat load on this must be less than 500 watts. We're also given that the temperature of the inside the freezer, we're gonna assume that the, the temperature inside the freezer is the same as the wall temperature of styrofoam inside the freezer it's minus 10 degrees C. And the outside of the freezer compartment is at a temperature of 35 degrees C. And then we're asked to find the insulation thickness. So that's the given and what we're asked to find. So uh, we, we go to our library of possible solutions and we say, okay, let's see, this is definitely a conduction problem. Okay, right, you got that right. Uh, is it 1D? Yeah, we're gonna assume 1D. Okay, it's 1D. As I said before, the equation you use in chapter one for conduction pretty much is the upper right-hand equation. There it is, 1D. Okay. Um, do I want Q double prime or do I want to use Q? Let's go back to the units again. Q double prime, watts per square meter. Q, watts, look at what you're given. I'm not given watts per square meter, I'm given watts. You can guess which one I'm going to use. I'm going to use Q. So we take our equation over there, just like here. Q equal Q double prime times A. Q double prime times A. K, A, delta T over L. L is the thickness of the insulation. Okay, so 
Um, I want to solve for that is how thick should it be? Okay. So L <clears throat> equal K A delta T over Q. Okay. Um, K was given. Okay, area, okay, now, oh, I didn't mention that. Um, bottom is perfectly insulated. It's assumed to be on, on the ground, and for that, we're gonna assume that there's no real heat gain from the ground <clears throat> for this problem. So where does the heat gain come from? Well, the top and the four sidewalls top and the four sidewalls. Each one is two by two meters. How many of those squares are there? Five times one, one square, two by two. Five meters, uh, five, pardon me. Two meters, two meters. Uh, hot temperature, 35. Minus cold temperature, minus 10 degrees C. Divided by Q, now what's Q? Q is called the heat load. What does the heat load mean? The heat load, okay. Let's take this room and I, uh, I block off the HVAC duct so no air is coming in here. The air in here is stagnant. And it's gonna get warmer with time. The sun's hitting the east-facing wall with the bricks on the outside. He's coming through that wall. The lights generate heat. Your bodies generate heat. By 2 o'clock today, it's going to be pretty warm in here. Well, how do we prevent that happening? Uh, we turn on the air conditioning, for instance, maybe. Uh, how much heat has to be taken out by the AC unit? That's called the heat load, okay, heat load. So in order to keep this stuff inside at minus 10 degrees C, okay, for, because right now the outside's warm, the inside's cool, 500 watts are coming in, okay, so you've got to take that heat out somehow. That's what heat load means, 500 watts. So L is equal to, okay. Okay, there. See that last thing drives some people crazy. They say, whoa, whoa, whoa there, hold on there, hold on there. You can't cancel those out, that's degree K, that's degree C, illegal. I say, no, not illegal, sorry. I don't care. If you don't like this right here, you take your finger, you erase the K, and you put degree C. That's the rule. Drives people crazy sometimes. No, you gotta add 273. Oh no, you don't. Because here's the magic word, P-E-R, per. This is watts per degree C. Okay. You don't you say, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave that K. I'm gonna leave that K. But I'm gonna change these guys to K. Okay, let's do that. 35 plus 273. Minus, minus 10, plus 273, okay, degree K, degree K, equal, plus 273, minus 273, 35, minus a minus 10, degree K. They look the same. Of course they do. Drive some people crazy. They say, wow, I don't. I don't get that. All right, let's take freezing, boiling, water, zero degrees C, 100 degrees C. Okay, freezing, 273, 373, 
The difference here, 100 degree C. The difference here, 100 degree K. No, 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 it doesn't matter. As long as you put the minus sign there, the minus sign. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you, you, you can't just say 100 degrees C is 100 degrees K, illegal. 100 degrees C is 100 plus 273 degree K. But when I take the difference, the minus sign, or I say the word per, 0 0.030 watts per K, it can also be 0 0.030 watts per degree C. Okay, so just so that won't drive you crazy. The answer is um, 0 0.0254 meters, 2.54 centimeters. That, well, that's, that's my, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry, it's five. That changed that guy, he's 0 0.054. There's no two in front of that. About two inches, two inches. So that freezer compartment, there's two inches of insulation around it there, that much. Okay, so that's pretty simple and straightforward problem. Uh, now let's do another one. Uh-huh. Um, on problems that were given, is it stated that the bottom is perfectly Yeah, it did. Okay. It did in the problem stated, yeah. I just didn't put it on there first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Question? Uh -huh. Just to reiterate, for the heat load, it's just how much heat is being taken out of the room. To keep the temperature at what it was previously. Okay. Yeah, yeah. For instance, you put this as a, comp a computer lab, a lot more heat generated. You need more AC to keep the room cool. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. yes, sir. Um, so when you put it in the third time, your well is maybe 500 to uh, watt hours or something. Because you said like over a certain time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Watt hour multiplied by time gives you what? What's a watt? Uh, energy per time. Yeah. Energy per time times a time yeah. gives you what? Energy. That's right, that's right, that gives you energy. There's a difference in energy and power. Energy is joules, okay. power is watts. One joule <coughs> per second, energy per time. One joule per second equal one watt. What's one watt? Power. So yeah, keep that in mind too. Is there an energy load in here? Pardon me? Is there an energy load in here? Yeah, 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 should be, yeah. So we just worked one in conduction, let's work one in convection. Uh, okay, example. All right, convection. Um, <clears throat> we have electric resistance heater. Embedded in a long cylinder. of diameter 30 millimeters. Okay. Air blows over the cylinder. Uh, air temperature is 23 degrees C. Surface temperature of the cylinder is, I think it's 90, yeah, 90 degrees C. Okay. Heater puts out <laughs> 400 watts per meter. Okay, I think that's all we need. What is the value of the convection coefficient? So here's our picture. Let's 
cylinder. Heater. Air blowing over it. Convection coefficient on the outside. T surface on the outside. Air temperature T infinity. So that's what's going on. Embedded means, well, here's what they do. You can buy these things. They're electric resistance heaters. They look like this. Maybe they're called cartridge heaters. They look like a cylinder like this. And you might want to drill a hole in an aluminum cylinder. Drill a hole in the middle. Aluminum cylinder. Stick this guy in the hole in the cylinder. My hand's a cylinder. This is the heater. So there's, this is the outside surface temperature of this. Put this guy across a power supply. It generates power how much? 400 watts per meter. Where does that heat go out to the air through the outside surface of the cylinder? OK, chapter one, we have no choice. Go to number two, convection heat transfer. I wonder what equation I should use. Oh, OK. I don't have any choice. It's number two. OK, number two. All right, so over here. We have Q double prime. Uh, well, let's, let's look at this and get this right. Um, we have to answer the question, which Q do we want? Uh, do we want Q, Q prime, or Q double prime? So we have Q in watts, Q prime in watts per meter, Q double prime in watts per meter squared. Oh, there's the big giveaway. He gave me the heater output, 400 watts per meter. I want that guy, Q prime. Okay, but I'm gonna start with Q, because none of my equations have Q prime in them yet. So I'll start with Q. Convection, Q equal H A. T S minus T infinity. Okay, solve for H. H equal Q. Oh, no, we don't want to solve for Q prime, yeah, our Q prime there. Yeah, Q prime, got it. So H, and we have our area, T S minus T infinity. Uh, that's Q, not a prime. Okay. Okay, so we've got that. <clears throat> now, we really don't want, I'm going to do it this way. <coughs> it might be easier to see. What is H? H is equal to A. What is the area of that cylinder? Pi DL. Pi DL. TS minus T infinity. This makes better sense to work it that way. We'll come back to that. I don't want Q because I'm given Q prime. I'm giving Q prime. What's Q prime? Uh, I'll put it here. Q over L. So I want Q prime. H pi D L T S minus T infinity divided by <clears throat> L. Cancel, cancel. Now I'll solve for H this way. So H <clears throat> is equal to Q prime over pi D T S minus T infinity. Okay, so we have 400 watts per meter <clears throat> divided by pi Diameter in meters, temperature 90 minus 25, 65. Chapter one, pretty simplistic problems, of course, but that's all right. 
Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, pardon me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking back at I think that probably that was 35. This guy was what 23? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did I get the diameter wrong too? Oh, I did. Am I taking? Am I taking 100 from? Oh, I know what. I'm, okay, yeah. Yeah, 35. You said, uh, right? 30. 30. I'm doing. I'm doing the next problem. I'm ahead of myself. The next problem's 100. <laughs> Thank you, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So if q is two plus and q double prime is two plus, what do you call q? <laughs> okay, good point. Yeah, okay. So you call this guy the heat rate or just the heat transfers, okay? This guy you call the heat flux. This guy you don't call him anything. He has no name. It's just, it's just watts per meter. He's not given a special name. Okay, so what you do in a problem, you look for keys. One key is, oh, in this problem, uh, the key is there, watts per meter. This problem, the key is there, watts. That gives you a hint of where you want to go when you start with your equation over there. The equation is Q double prime. I want Q prime. How do I get there? I convert Q double prime to Q and then Q to Q prime. Otherwise, you can kind of get messed up with those three Q terms there. Okay, so now that takes care of two. We did one with conduction, one with convection. Now we're gonna do one with uh, radiation. Okay, so let's look at the radiation one. This is an instrumentation package, spherical instrumentation package. Okay, got it. There's my 100 millimeters. Okay, with an emissivity 0.23. Got it. Uh, it's in a large space simulation chamber. whose walls are at 77K. The outside of the package is at 40 degrees C. We get all we need. Yeah. Okay. We're asked to find the power being dissipated by the package. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So this is some kind of spherical instrumentation package generating heat. It's placed in a large simulation chamber, simulating black space, for instance. The walls of that chamber are very low, 77 degree K. 
simulating a black space environment. The package itself has an outside surface temperature of 40 degrees C. Okay. How much power is being dissipated? Now, he said power. Okay. Big giveaway. Power is only one thing. Watts. I want Q. He said the magic word. The magic word. Large. Oh, thank you. Because only if I see the word large can I use this equation. Large enclosure. Okay, he's legal. There's my Q in watts. So Q is equal to epsilon <coughs> sigma A T S to the fourth minus T surroundings to the fourth. Epsilon is epsilon of the small object. 0.23. Sigma is the constant, 5.67, 10 to the minus 8. Area of a sphere, surface area, pi d squared. Multiplied by surface temperature. Oh, you better be careful. It's not degree K. I told you over there, everything in radiation has to be degrees K. 40 plus 273 to the fourth minus 77 to the fourth. Power dissipated, 4.3 watts. Um, officially, officially, you're, you're not supposed to put the degree with K when you write a technical paper. You don't put degrees with K in SI. You do uh, with C, you put degrees. You do with Fahrenheit, okay. You do with Rankin, degree, degree. Degree, but K, no, no, not, not, they don't do it. I'll probably do it in class because I don't want you to get that K, that K right there, you won't, that K confused with that K up there, okay, both K's, okay. So I'm gonna put degree with it just so that you can, you see it clearly. Okay, so that takes care of the radiation problem. All right, now, the last thing in chapter one there are two important energy balance equations. So we'll first do an energy balance. On uh, a control volume. So here's our control volume. Control surface surrounds the control volume, the control surface. Energy can enter the uh, control volume. E stands for energy. It can cross the control surface going in. It can cross the control surface going out. There may be some storage of energy inside. There may be some generation of energy inside. E dot N. And let's put down the official words on these guys so I get them all right here. We'll call it the rate at which thermal energy enters. <coughs> okay. E dot going out, the rate at which thermal energy leaves. 
the control volume. E dot storage equal the rate at which thermal, uh, at which energy is stored. And finally, E dot G, rate at which energy is generated. You know, if you have more energy coming in than going out, it is going to be stored. What, but what does generation mean? Well, the classic example is a wire carrying a current. As the wire is carrying the current, there's energy generated in that wire. It starts to glow dull red, maybe. Uh, nuclear fuel rod assembly is internal energy generated then for sure. That's the whole purpose of it. So that's a case of energy generation. Okay. So when we do this now, we write in, we know what's going on. So energy balance. is what comes in minus what goes out plus the amount of energy generated internally in it must go to a change in the storage of energy. So this is the basic equation we use throughout the semester. There, and again, what is E? E is energy. What is energy? Joules. Joules. What does a dot mean above it? Per time. So E dot is energy per time, joules per second, watts. Those guys are watts. Okay, now the second equation is um, we consider a surface of the solid. So here is our material. The dashed lines are our control surface. What's inside of there is the control volume and the dashed lines control surface. Okay, apply the energy balance equation for the control volume for a surface. E dot in minus E dot out plus E dot gen equal E dot storage. So a, a trick question for they can ask somebody, ask them, uh, how thick is the surface of that, of that wall? How thick is it? The guy says, how thick? I don't know. Thousandths of an inch, a tenth of an inch? I don't know. That, that's a surface. And the answer is, no, the, 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 surface, the surface volume approaches zero. Zero. The thickness approaches zero. That's what a surface is. Surface means not inside. It's on the surface. How thick is a surface? Uh, negligibly thick. It approaches zero. For a surface, the volume approaches zero. What is mass? Density times volume. Mass is density times volume. If the volume goes to zero, I'm not going to put the whole thing down for saving some space here. The mass is going to approach zero. If there's no mass, how can it store energy? Don't forget what mass, what, what the storage in simple terms is. MC sub P delta T, MC sub P delta T storage. If mass is zero, guess what storage can be? Zero.
if there's no mass, how can it generate energy? You need mass to generate energy. True. E dot G is zero. So we're left with what comes in must equal what goes out energy-wise. So that's the equation for the energy balance on a surface of an object. What comes in must go out because the volume and the mass approach zero. So um, we're going to work a problem involving these two equations, but we'll wait till next time to do that. So then we'll uh, see you on Monday.